So the objective of today's class is to teach you guys how to identify settings with fiction stories. So who can tell me what part of a setting is? Just part of a setting is where a story takes place. Where a story takes place, and who can tell me the other part? Really? When a story takes place. When a story. So can you guys give me an example of where a story might take place? It could be something like a school, or maybe something like Planet Earth. Right, so it can be either really specific, like the school, and you can even include the room or something, or it can be really broad, like the Earth, which isn't that specific, but still gives you some setting of where it is. Who can tell me a specific example of when a story might take place? Um, for example, on Monday. <laughs> on Monday, yep. Or who can give me a broader example? Uh, the month of March. The month of March, or you can even expand it to the year of 2011 or something like that. All right. <clears throat> and, but does it have to include all of these? Do you have to say Monday 2011, or can, can you just say Monday? Just say Monday. Just say Monday. Right. And so let's <coughs> say you guys, let's say I told you guys you had to write a short story about class today. What, what could be a setting that you give? Uh, you could say this classroom. This classroom, or you, know, you can vary it up. What would you say? You could say Colby College. Colby College, yeah. right. And if you were to include a, the part of the setting that tells the when, what could you say? Um, 10.30. 10.30, yeah. Or you could say March or 2011 or anything like that. So it can either be specific or broad, but it can fall anywhere in between. It doesn't have to include everything all the time. It can be very different in different stories. So if you look at the example the short story I handed you guys out today, The Landlady by Roald Dahl. Who can tell me part of the setting in that story? Justin. It's in Bath. Bath. And, and you, know, you guys might not know this off the top of your head, but where do we think Bath is? It doesn't say it specifically, but some of the clues in the story might be able to give you a hint. Well, it says London. It says he traveled to Bath from London, so he's presumed you're in England. England, because London's in England, right? So it doesn't specifically say that Bath is in England, but judging and taking some of the clues that the story gives you, you can sort of pick that out. And what about the time? What time does it say? It's in that first paragraph. Yeah. It says he got to Bath about 9 o'clock. Yep, so that's 9 o'clock in the evening, so it's 9 p.m. But it doesn't say the season or the year or anything like that. So we don't really have any clue except that it's at night, right? So, can we get can we get more specific than Bath? It doesn't say it necessarily in the first paragraph where it says Bath, but if you keep reading, you'll figure it out. Yep. It says that it's at a bed and breakfast. Um, all right, so we know it's in Bath, and we also know that it's in a bed and breakfast. So what's the more specific part of that? So bed and breakfast. Bed and breakfast. More local. And so Bath, we know, is in England. England, so that's the broader part, right? And so even though the author doesn't specifically tell you that it's in England, you guys can figure that broader section out based on the clues that he gives you through the writing. So when you're figuring out the broader and specific aspects of the setting, it's much easier to figure out the broader aspects of the clues he gives rather than the specifics, because that's something he has to more explicitly tell you. And so what do we notice about the setting at the beginning of the story when he first gets to Bath and the end of the story? What's the setting at the beginning of the story? It's, it's at nighttime, and it says, yeah, it walk to the It just says it's in Bath, right? Yes. And then as the end of this, at the end of the story, it says that he gets to the bed and breakfast, right? Yes. So what happens there? It becomes more specific as you read the story. Right, it changes, so it shows that the setting in the story doesn't always have to be the same, right? It can change as the story goes out or as the character moves from one place to another. So let's go back to the idea that you guys are writing a story about this class. Let's say you wanted to include lunch today, so you start with lunch, and what would the setting of lunch be if you started a short story of lunch? I went to Fast Dining Hall today. Right, and so that's the setting of the story at the beginning, but as you take it towards the end of the day, and you end up here, how does the setting change? It shifted locations from one part of campus to another part of campus, and specifically Foss Dining Hall to like go to a class. Yeah, but what didn't change in terms of the when? 
The, the day. The day, right? And so what doesn't change in the story here? The day. The day or the year or anything like that. But he stays in the same town, he just gets more specific, right? So, <clears throat> based on the story and based on how we've defined a setting, how would you go about reading a story and sort of choosing, identifying the setting in there? Yeah. You might look for where the character is. Mm -hmm. yeah. What other clues might they give you? Place names. Place names, and like you guys had, you guys had Bath, which you might not know is in England, but because he came from London, which we know is England, and we can probably assume safely that he's in England, right? So you can sort of make assumptions based on other clues. <clears throat> and how else do you find out the setting of how do you how else do you identify settings? It, ex it explicitly says it was about nine o'clock in the evening. Right, so, so that gives you the way. Just sort of like a close reading it can tell you sometimes. Okay. Alright, so just to recap, how do you identify a setting and what is a setting? Someone wants to just sum that up. A setting is where and when a story takes place. Yep. But and it doesn't have to change. It doesn't have to change, but it can change, right? But it can change. Yep. And, and sometimes it changes throughout a story. Mm -hmm. and, and you can identify it just through clues in the writing, the place names, or times, so or just looking for this event. Right. So sometimes it straight tells you, and other times you just have to sort of read it and then make assumptions on your own. And sometimes it takes outside knowledge or even outside research. All right, so now we're going to go with the chant, and the parts that you guys are involved with are the parts in bold, so I'm going to say something, and then you sort of echo me with the, not necessarily echo, but you guys respond to me with the parts in bold, so I'm going to start. Writing an essay is a whole process, and it takes practice, I must confess. First things first, let's organize. Don't just write, that'd be unwise. Now let's get you involved, and our essay problem solved. First things first, you plan, plan, plan. Write a good essay? Yes, yes, we can. You start with a thesis. That's our base. From here you write? A, a winning case. case. Now you make an outline with? Lots of evidence. Some hard work here. Will help our eloquence. Now you know just what to write. And write we will because we are right. The writing's all finished, but you're not done. Can't ever forget the revision. And yes, that means many more than one. Could it be even a ton? I know this part isn't much fun, but a good essay is never done. Hand them in when you're all satisfied. Because they're so good, we fill with pride. Now let's get an A and boast all day, because we know we can write a good essay.